You see this bolt? When you think about how many of these puppies are in a tower, it's easy to overlook the importance of each and every one and each and every structural member. We're gonna talk about the do's and don'ts of proper tower modification next. Tower crews have a lot to think about when they arrive at a job. On top of that list is how to go about doing quality work safely and efficiently without compromising the integrity of the tower. This is my buddy Dave, how you doing my man? And today we're talking about the ins and outs of tower modifications. Dave, I know there are a lot of things that fall under tower modification, but today let's focus on the more common elements such as strengthening a tower to give it more capacity. Yeah, when we're talking about tower modifications, there's really several different things we could be talking about. We could be upgrading the foundation, modifying existing members, replacing tower members, or even a guy wire replacement. I assume there's some engineering standards in place for this, right? Yeah, Ryan, so ANSI's A1048 clearly states that all construction activities must have a rigging plan classification outlining that project in detail. Most often, tower modifications fall under a class four rigging plan, which requires review by a qualified engineer. That engineer is going to use the ANSI TIA 322 standards to analyze the project. What about replacing something as simple as a structural bolt? It depends on the placement and the purpose of the bolt, Ryan. I mean, if we're replacing a single bolt in a connection that has multiple bolts, the rigging plan may allow you to replace one at a time. But if it's a single bolt connection that carries out multiple members, we may have to install temporary bracing first. So this single bolt right here, if removed, could compromise the entire structure? It could, Ryan, and that's why the removal of any structural member calls for a class 4 rigging plan. It takes into consideration the temporary reinforcement of the structure while we disconnect or alter members. And remember, all temporary bracing must be reviewed by a qualified engineer. So it's all about the proper sequence, right? Well, think even in the terms of building blocks, Ryan. When we're strengthening a tower, typically we perform modifications from the bottom up. In other words, start with the anchors and guy wires first, and then the base. Work your way up and add or replace steel one section at a time, but always work in accordance with the rigging plan. Dave, tell me about guy wire modifications. Yeah, well, replacing or disconnecting guy wires generally requires temporary guy support. Same rules apply. Always follow the approved rigging plan because sometimes the engineer may want to replace guy wires higher up on the structure first. And when in doubt, work with the responsible people listed on your rigging plan. And here are some reminders to help you plan your work. Do as much prep work on the ground as possible. Don't overload your fixed ladders with equipment. Make sure you and your team are protected from falling objects. Don't allow unskilled workers to work without supervision. Work in only one area at a time. Don't skip steps to get done quicker. Finally, keep the same procedures in place throughout the project. Don't forget the sequence. Be sure to refer to the ASSE ANSI A1048 standards for the details of class 4 rigging plans and your responsibilities in that plan as a tower technician. Remember, tower modification is serious business, so take the time to know and understand the steps you need to go through to get the job done right. And as always, stay safe my friends.